Well, here we are at the wine house. I've arrived ahead of Stevie. He's down in San Francisco doing a tasting. The wine house is just one incredible place, for lack of better words. It's uh, vineyards all around. If you look up in the distance, you could see the house. We're about halfway up the driveway, which is about two miles long. There's nothing but vineyards all around it. And uh, we'll be staying here. I'll be meeting Stevie. He'll be in one of his educational modes because he'll be preparing and actually bringing some uh, Grand Cru Burgundies with him to prepare for a CIA lecture, which he's going to be doing later in the week. So... Now, I just arrived at the wine house. That's the barn over there. Where they keep the equipment to take care of all the fields around here, the vineyards. This is the house that we're going to be staying at. We refer to it as the wine house. You can see that the vineyards are extensive in every direction. It literally is miles. And uh, we're going to be here as uh, guests of some very gracious friends who are growers. And these are all their vineyards and the wine house is where they uh, entertain. So uh, let's take a look at the back. This is the back of the house and a nice little hot tub and it's 360 degrees of vineyards in every direction that you look. There's grapes growing and up on the hills you can see they're planting new vineyards right now. Uh, the wine house is an incredible place. I mean, it's known for its incredible views, its location, but it's also known for uh, the hospitality of its owners. They are just incredible. If they know that you like something, it'll be waiting in the house for you. They also are some of the best and biggest growers in Napa, so they have wines available to them that are just not available to other people which makes the wine cellar at the wine house very unique and fun. This is the view from inside the wine house looking out over the back porch from the parlor. What do we have, Stevie? We have Pinot Grigio from, not Italy, from Napa County, Pinot Grigio, Luna Vineyards, 2004, barrel fermented. So what would that tell you in a Pinot Grigio, barrel fermented? That would not be a typical Pinot Grigio, because most Pinot Grigios we used to never see all. Barrel fermented is suggesting it was fermented in a barrel. That also could suggests the very fine possible, very uh, good possibility that it has a malolactic fermentation too, which would make it more creamy and richer in flavor and all that, and be more like a Chardonnay in a sense. So here we are. This wine, we, from some gracious, gracious friends, we're here in the beautiful house right in the Canaros region of Napa Valley with all the vineyards all around us. A house that's purposes for wine and wine people. And here we have, they said, help us to some wine. So we pulled this Pinot Grigio off the show. Let's see what it says on the back. It says, our Pinot Grigio is barrel fermented using native yeast. Okay. What does native yeast mean? Native yeast means that there's certain yeasts that come, uh, grow in the vines and stuff on the vines and in the vineyards that when the grapes are crushed and everything are included in that and yeast that grow on the vines you know they actually collect it and put it into the wine so native yeast means from the vineyard the wine comes from you would have a yeast that uh, imparts flavors and any effect on the wine or attributes to the wine would be from those yeast and would be different than buying a commercial yeast. There are yeast you can buy out there, winemakers can buy commercial yeast to help ferment their wines that are safe. In other words, these yeast, you, it's a risky proposition because it can go off in one direction or another because you're working with all natural stuff 
and things can go wrong and you can ruin your wine with it. But if you don't do that, which these expert winemakers here in Napa know how not to do, but they're even nervous about it. Uh, what was I, the, this will, uh, will present the terroir of where these grapes come from because even the yeast that are helping to break down the wine, the sugar, to turn into alcohol are from the vineyard itself imparting that effect on it. So it's really, it, that's a good thing and the winemaker in the winery has to take a financial risk to do, do this. So that's a dedication to good wine. So when you see that, that tells you something good. And the wine is aged in French oak barrels for seven months. Woo! Now that's not Pinot Grigio. I, I can't wait to taste this now. <laughs> well, let's go seven months taste. in French oak for a Pinot Grigio. Outside, out of the kitchen. Look, look at this, everybody. Look out here. Napa Valley. Napa Valley, baby. This is the Canaros region. If you notice, the hills are rolling here. When you go further north in the valley, it gets to be more mountainous, steeper mountains and stuff when you're up in Rutherford and even further up. Uh, but here it's rolling. This is the coolest part of Napa. In fact, today, I know in other parts very close to here, it was in the 90s. Here it's beautiful, breezy, the sun feels great. This is what, this is the kind of climate. It, tonight it will really cool off a lot. This is the kind of climate that Pinot Noir and good Chardonnay really like. So here we go. This is where we're going to taste our Pinot Grigio, which judging from the label in our constant quest to read wine labels, this is saying Napa County. So it's not really saying what part of Napa. So is this from the Canaros? I would say there's a good chance because we're staying in a house in the Canaros here, and these are wine growers that own this house that grow grapes around here. So maybe there's a good chance this does come from there, but we don't know from the label. 